Alright, you guys ready? Do it. This is what it feels like to ride in a bobsled. You can't see shit. Your helmet smashes against the steel frame of the sled. The earth feels like it is sucking you into its core. Your neck and back are folded in half. And on the final curves, just when you think your body can't handle any more pressure, the sled goes faster. Well, I didn't want to tell you at the top either. That was my first four-man trip of the year too. Oh, great. oh my god! Yeah. So the world champion four-man's first trip of the year. training for the Olympics was with yes. Vanessa and I. Yeah. So now you think you want to be a bobsledder? The first thing you need is a driver who can negotiate the curves. Let's see, this is curve 18. This is curve 18. It's uh, it is one of the tricky. It's the last tricky curve of the of the track, and there's only 20. This is Steve Holcomb. He's currently one of the best bobsled drivers on the planet. But just a few years ago, Steve almost went blind. He suffers from a degenerative eye disease called keratoconus, and his vision got so bad he almost retired. But with an experimental procedure where doctors inserted permanent lenses in his eyes, Steve's sight has greatly improved. You're 2020 now, what, what was the worst? Um, without my contacts, I was about 2,500. I think that's one reason that I developed as a driver um, so quickly is, you know, they say driving by feel actually, you know, is is the better way to drive. So without being able to see, I had to rely more on my feel. And actually, after I had the lenses put in, um, I had a real difficult time driving because now I could see. And I actually, my visor on my helmet's all scratched up and dirty, and I don't really plan on changing it or cleaning it because I don't want to see all that stuff. That's too much information. His tactics might be a little unconventional, but whatever he's doing, it's working. The U.S. bobsled team is currently ranked number one in the world. Now after you score a top-notch driver, the next thing you need is a rocket ship sled. We took our ride in a 2007 little beauty called Thunderstruck. But this year, Steve and his teammates have some brand new weapons. This $60,000 piece of speed is called the Nighthawk. This two-man bobsled is Steve's pride and joy. Yep. Along with her big sister, the four-man bobsled called the Night Train. Like most guys in their toys, these athletes treat their sleds with tender loving care. Turns over, that's what's hitting. Steve says he's married to the four-man bobsled on Facebook and push athlete Justin Olsen says he treats it like a babe. Jackpot. It's like candy. In many ways, bobsled prep mirrors that of another speed sport, NASCAR. But bobsledders can't afford big budget pit crews. Yeah, we don't have any uh, equipment managers to, to take care of our work for us, so yeah, we have to do it all ourselves. You know, specification books for a bobsled is got to be a couple inches thick, but at the same time, you know, always playing with something, trying to find a fraction of a second here or there. Money. The next thing you need for a winning bobsled team are push athletes. These guys push the sled hard at the start, which saves the driver time at the finish. By weight training all summer and fall, they'll develop enough muscle to push a 500 pound sled with some serious power. Kurt Tomasevich is a former football player at Nebraska. Justin Olsen is a 22-year-old push prodigy, and the fourth member of the top US team, who we didn't get to meet this day, is Steve Messler, competing in his third Olympics. He's gonna do a power clean. You wanna start light, but the main thing is lifting with your, with your legs, not your back. Uh, this is called an RDL, it's a Romanian deadlift, and it's pretty much all glute and hamstring. He's keeping his back pretty flat, his knees slightly bent. Um, keeping the bar close as you can to his body. It's a good lift. I mean, if you really want to get a light, nice butt, tone butt, RDL's the way to go. Have to add more weight. And this is, uh, this is just a regular back squat. There you go, come on, nice. The next component for top-notch bobsledding, team chemistry. Unlike many teams, in bobsled, the driver calls the shots. 
he can replace any of his push athletes at any time. Of course, performance counts. But when you spend so much time together bunched up in a sled, you'd better not drive each other crazy. If you don't like the guy you're standing next to, you're not going to fight for him, you know. And there's a weird thing, that, that kind of a subconscious thing. If you don't like the people you're with, you just don't push well. You know, you're going to war and you want to make sure that all four of you are there for each other. If you watch a bobsled start, you'll see just how much the guys have to work together. It's a little hard to see, but if you watch this practice run, the driver will load first. A few steps later, the second man hops off the ice and onto the side of the sled, then the third man. The brake man then slips in, sits first, and releases the push bars. The third man sits, then the second. This well choreographed start has to be done within seconds. Watch it again in real time. If anyone is off key, the sled will be slowed down the track. If their limbs are jumbled in the cramped sled, they may suffer some serious bruises. With the men and the equipment, the sled will weigh close to 1,400 pounds. So there you have it. Driver, sled, push dudes, and team chemistry. But in a sport like bobsled, which doesn't make much money, success doesn't come easy. So you'd better love what you're doing. We're all volunteers. We, um, we don't get paid to do what we're doing. And so we rely on sponsors. And I'm about 40,000 Gs in debt from the sport. But I think, uh, I don't know, it'll pay off someday. The Jane Fonda's, you gotta like this. You should be proud. <laughs> it's been nearly 62 years since the U.S. won an Olympic gold medal in the four-man bobsled. But if his team pushes hard at the start, and Steve could smoothly steer those treacherous curves, he just might make history in Vancouver. Let's see you up. See you tomorrow.